Now, I don't know how many times you've tried. I know some students, like some of my friends, they read, like from the fourth day of lecture, they reading. They time themselves very well, because why? They know they are not very smart. They don't learn fast. You see themselves, bury themselves. They're very, they're trying to read up fast. They're trying to read each day. And at, and whenever lecture, or whenever we finish a particular lecture, they come back to the hotel, you see them reading at night. When you see some students, they will not even read. And as an example, I wouldn't read till maybe when it's time for peace or something. But now, you see such students who don't read coming out with perfect sight. Why those people who keep reading? Now you see them trying because they are struggling. Yes, it's very important. If you know that you are not doing well or like your brain capacity can or you don't think very smart, or you don't think very fast, I think that's a very good approach. Like, taking your time to read. After every lecture, you read for better understanding. Now, the ability to resist distractions or sensations. Friends. I don't know what type of friends you have, but I think when you time yourself very well. You actually know that there's time for everything. There's time whereby you have you, you, you should spend with your friends. Look, you can discuss one of the things with your friends, you will laugh, chat, and do other things. That is also very important. Because they said all work has to be necessary and very well. Now it's also very important, but it's now depending on what time and how you do this. Try over and over again until you accomplish what you set out to do. Yes, I have many friends like that who always read and read and read. Or say three years. Whenever I read, I go to the exam hall. I forget what I read. I do this. So those kind of people, advice is like. Trying over and over again, never to lose hope. It's very important. Also, prayers. Prayers too is very important. When achieving academic success or when you achieve your academic goals, when you pray, it's also helps. Prayer is just like the communication between you and your phone. It also helps you to accomplish your third goal. Now, during the exam, you find out some students, they come into the exam hall and they tell you, if I don't take alcohol, if I don't take alcohol, I wouldn't write my exam well. I don't know how true that is and I don't know how, I don't know of what benefit it gives to that particular individual. I know I've met certain people like that and with my knowledge of our chemistry. I know that when you take alcohol, it can actually make that particular individual dizzy. Taking alcohol before going into the exam hall is not considered self discipline because you might not even know your brain capacity. You might, you might just need you to do things you don't even expect to do. Those things that you didn't, you didn't go plan to eat because you always say you don't hyperactive, you make me high and other things. I don't know how it relates to education, but for me, I don't think it's a good approach when achieving your goal. Coming late to class too. When you come late to class activities, you have to manage your time very well. As I said earlier, time management and self-discipline goes together. If you're not able to manage your time very well, you see yourself going backwards. If you don't have that self-compartment or compartment and that inner strength in you, you see yourself misbehaving. But 
for it to get being big and being effective. Souls can actually be busy, but the person is not effective. What do I mean? You spend your whole day, you take someone and have a stressful day. You realize you haven't achieved something. You, you just end up being busy, but you've not been effective. Okay. So then, yes, I've, I've, I've had people talk about that. I, even, I think I had a, I did something last semester about exam anxiety. Where you see somebody, they play the, the regular role, but inside the examination hall, they have a blank memory. It happens. It is something that like, is normal with me. That happened to me. But there's this thing that students don't really know. When you just read for your examination, that is when you get you tend to be disappointed. You don't have to read to pass. You have to be familiar with something that even if someone wakes up in the gym from sleep, you can talk on that thing. Last semester, let me just use an example so that I know that it is real. There was a course we wrote. Um, it has to do with history. You had to write on dates and everything. Once school resumes, I start reading. And I don't know what happened. In the examination hall, for like 30 minutes out, I had nothing in my mind. I was looking at the paper. The people were looking at me. What helped me was that I have gotten so used to that course. After some minutes, I had to ask myself, what is happening? I have been reading this course since this semester began. What helped me was the knowledge I've acquired from all those times I've been reading. When I started writing, I couldn't stop. But let's, I didn't mean I, 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 I haven't been reading that book. That I waited to exam. I will come out and I'll start crying from after writing that examination because truly I won't know what to write. So what I tell people around my course, my them, you don't have to wait for examination to start reading. I like getting familiar with my courses. You need to get familiar with your courses. Some of us are we 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 have these calculation courses that me I don't like calculation. Any anytime I'm having to have to do calculation, I will have to give it special attention. When I need special attention, if I have to read, if I want to read for three hours, I'll read that particular course for two hours. Then I'll just use one hour to go to the other one because of what I know that is my weakness. You have to discover your weakness and your strength. Okay, just like I said earlier, we know that examination anxiety can occur. The problem with it some time ago, we, we uh, I was trying to help students who would, who would identify that they have such problems. There are some psychological measures you can take that will help you through this 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 thing called anxiety. You don't have to start saying that you have a problem. It's not a problem. Sometimes it's just the mind, mindset. A psychologist carried out an experiment, classical conditioning, pairing something to something. Like in this, um, let's say for example, this um, this hall, some days three. If I had written an examination here, and maybe during the course of that examination, I had a bad experience, I would pair this particular hall with that bad experience. That's the unconditional stimulus. It would, it would make me, whenever I want to come inside this place, I'll have this kind of bad feeling. Why? I have paid this place with my bad experience. And it can affect my performance. Maybe students pair their, maybe their bad performance in exams and to their recent, um, exams. And it, it, it keeps affecting them. Maybe you had um, a bad experience with a lecturer. You didn't do it in a particular course. You didn't like, it's the same lecturer. You fed that lecturer to fail you. Whenever the lecturer is teaching anything, you're like, I'm not sure I'm going to pass. You have to work on your mindset first. You have to, um, we are told that you learn something. The same way you learn something, you can also unlearn it. This fear is, some of the times, this fear that causes this thing that you read and you don't understand. This fear is, it can be unlearned. You learn it, you can also what? Unlearn it. 
So what I will advise the students that have this problem, okay, they have this, you know the problem actually, the challenge. Try and get familiar with the courses, especially the ones that you know that if you give it the, the normal time which you give to other courses, you might not do well. Forgetting is something that happens to everybody. Everybody do forget. But believe me, when you're familiar with something, even if you don't remember word by word what you will be given in class, because of that familiarity, something will come to your head, something that you have to write, and you come out regretting after the examination. Thank you. Thank you. We just have to make this a bit too much of time. Well, one other issue, other issue that I would have thought that we practice, we'll have to 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 practice, I would have thought that we trash this. If, uh, the possibility of reading, you know, some students are in the habit of reading while having music on. Because it actually affects me. These, these are issues that we would have loved uh, my participants trash in the time they could answer that. One other key thing in our abstract is group discussion, group discussion, which I want us to quickly look at. How important is this uh, thing, group discussion, with it? Useful or should students discard this? Okay, group discussion by definition is a group of students who come together to exchange ideas, encourage themselves to study, solve problems as a, as sort of as getting assignment done or exam, preparing for exam. But well, it's not every group discussion in academic setting that is good. Some group discussions are bad, while some are good. In my own term, at times, joining some people when they want to join group, they first of all go to their friends, those that they know they can't stay without gisting, and they tell them, please, let's form group. And we're talking about academic stuff, and they were agreeable. So at times, when they come to do the group discussion, you find out that even if it's two hours that are going to do that group discussion, they will waste one hour to discuss and gist. And then maybe 30 minutes to the time they will finish, one of them will have like, Since group discussion we came to do, and people have been gisting, they will not say, Hey, it's two hours, what's the topic we are having tomorrow? One of them will not say, This one, I better have, okay, what's the meaning of um, psychology. One of them will answer, the other person will say, I don't understand. Okay, me so 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 then I'm like, yeah, I don't understand. Me, I'm even feeling sleepy. They're like, okay, come, let's go and sleep. Tomorrow we'll continue. Tomorrow they come and repeat this. That is not group discussion. At times, when you want to join group discussion, you join in with people who are serious minded. They may not really be your friend, but they go with mental people. They know where they are going to. And mainly, at times, people misunderstand what group discussion is all about. It's actually a place you come. Maybe at times classes, lecturers may really talk, but you don't really understand what the lecturer is actually saying. In group discussions, the two of that group to bring up that person, you that don't understand it, you throw it out. This, this thing that they talked about in class, they don't really understand. Who understands this topic? One of you may really understand that the person will carry along with examples that you people meet on a daily basis. If you don't understand, you can easily ask that person a question because you are familiar with that person on a daily basis due to the group discussion. Unlike in class, you may really ask the lecturer, maybe the time is up or something, or one of the things. The lecturer may not really have the time to explain to you. But in group discussion, your fellow students can actually explain it to you very, very well in a sense that you understand very well. At times, in group discussion, it also helps us in the sense that at, when we meet, when we come for when we come for group discussions, it encourages us to study hard. When we feel challenged, when we come, people will be asking questions. This person will say, I have found this. You will tell us this topic. You, like this one. you yourself, when you feel, you feel challenged that this person is doing better than you, when you go next time, you will be there. So when you come, if it reaches your door, you will not be moving. You will have some, one of two things to share in that group discussion. Then one of the benefits we get from group discussion, the benefit of procrastination. When you are studying on your own, you may not really, you procrastinate may really come in. Because you will be saying, I'll study at night. And that night, you will watch film. After watching film, you will just be your roommate. By the end of the day, you discover that it's already 10 o'clock. And I said, they will soon up the gym by 10 30. Let me sleep to know that I'll read this topic. 
you will not read it until the death exam you will not come. Hey, this is not really let this story, but the beginning to the end goes. If you start reading it that time, and you discover that when you read and read and read, you don't really understand. The next day, that time for the exam comes, you will now go to Kate and ask Kate, please, what is this for this doctor? Well, Kate will now say, please, I'm still reading my own. I don't have that time to explain to you. Come back again. Hey, Jesus, Julia, you have to know that is not how to learn. But when you have good discussion, when that time, comes for that good discussion. Maybe it's 9 to 10 that you will bring you a good discussion. Whatever you are doing that time, once it's 9, you already know it's time for good discussion. They call you and you come down and do the good discussion. No matter how much you don't want to do it, so far that time is already a portion for it. You must do it. So, say that at times you learn faster in good discussion in the sense that they carry you along when they do their good discussion. Then you get new perspective. At times, let, well, let us share something. You may get this from one perspective, maybe a particular definition. You define it your own way. In group discussion, this person will define it the way she understands it. The other person will define it the way he understands it. When, as, as, in, in psychology, some of our lectures are really long, like all this written new stuff in the exam. And if you're studying psychology and you don't know how to write up to this whole sheet, if they give you this, you know something actually interesting. So, in group discussion, what they actually do is this person will explain, this person will explain, this person will explain. You join it to the one you already know. So, when they ask you with examples and their explanation, you can be able to write something that is not good because if you use only your own, you can't be it. Then, <coughs> you learn new study skills. Maybe your own don't really work. You learn from your neighbor the study skills that the person uses, maybe the time that the person has question for their own personal reading. Then breaks the monotone. Monotone. At times, studying alone can be boring. Maybe when you study, 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 you don't really understand or you're always coming across this particular topic. You get tired of studying. In group discussion, it will be in form of an interactive form. This person will say, this person will say. The one person might even say something that is funny. All of you will laugh. After laughing, you will come back. In exam, what you might even remember may not even be those serious, serious ones. But what might actually give you the cue to what you are going to write? Maybe that joke that that person cracked. Maybe when you remember that joke, you do not give you insight on this is how I will start. Before you know it, you've written up the one page and you continue that way. And that is how the discussion also helps. Then, in the disadvantages, I think we should always try not to. Join groups that our friends are watching. Join groups that you learn from, not really where your friends are from. And at times, in, also in group discussion, they should also have goals that they've set for that group. Their goals and their time management for that particular group. When you could come, don't go aside to about the push. Go straight to the point of what you could have to discuss for that day. Maybe after which, after discussing it and everyone understands, hey, you could can now share one or two jokes. Then, at times, finally, in group discussion as well, students also, there are some students that join groups that the people there are mainly, let's say, A class candidates. It's not so advisable. As a, as a person, you know the class you are in. When you want to join group discussion, go to that your class. The reason is when you go to that class of students, if you are the middle class student or below average, and you go to this class of students who are above average, what you discover is whenever they are discussing something, they discuss it based on that level. And once they do discuss it, what you hear, uh, share everybody understand. Yes. You people know that don't understand. Because of shame, you will not say, I understand. You will not say anything that you So we should always be mindful of the group of them. Thank you. I guess we have to leave it a close here. But without it, we have to take one or two questions. So that we can round up. We, we can keep talking about the topic. It's an interesting topic. Yeah. Let's take one or two questions so that we can round up. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Uh, a few days ago, when I came into this inspired solution, I'm a pastor of Pluto. Kind of in the technology. Is that the topic I feel very, very much? And uh, people are not talking psychology. But uh, I was thinking that uh, maybe uh, the group they didn't discuss after they had discussion, others 
what Harvey has said about burning a group. She says that if you, you are not yet, you are like the initial class in Israel, so she joined the school that made a uh, first class in the school. So we are meant to understand that what she joined the school that are higher than you, what she started the school that are higher than you, mm -hmm. and your knowledge is before, and you get an admitted to so many things, that when you are, you receive the same level, you receive the same class. So I think that in our living life, when you are very new, you see as much as you join the school in your own level. Try to join people that are above you, or they will teach you more than the people that are in the same class. Thank you. Okay, my question is, uh, tell me, you are working on going, giving the gospel by this one, right? Coming back by 3 p.m. And then how do you get to manage this time? Because there are also people who different programs, maybe fellowships, maybe meetings and all that. So it's better that you're coming back to work there by 7. So how do you get to manage this time? So you need to sleep, you need to cook, you need to read. How do I manage this time? So you say, Thank you. If my question goes to the first speaker, where she said something about making your goal compatible with your personality. She mentioned two personalities, extrovert and introvert. So she said introvert should not imitate extrovert by not reading. So my question is, does it mean that extrovert has the tendency to write or even when they do not read more than introvert? Okay, the first person that talked about relationships that have a specific problem. And because of time, I would I want to bring to another that we have um a school counselor. I don't know if you know our faculty. We will have psychology lab. We have a place with um, people that have such problems. You can go and talk to someone, a professional. I'm not in a professional. So I'm directing anybody, if you know anybody that has such a problem, the person can go in and have a talk with the person for that problem. Okay, the person that talked about how to manage your time. These people that come out with first class from our university, you know we have the same time with them. Now we have to ask ourselves, how, do they, how were they able to manage their, their time? Discipline. Being disciplined is something that every student has to inculcate. Someone said, indiscipline is a highway to the grave, and I believe the person. Because when you're disciplined, you know that you have things you need to do. You know that you have goals that you need to achieve. You come back from school, you do the things, set your priorities, you do the things that you're supposed to do, and not waste your time. I said before that being busy is not being effective. You can be busy, but you're not being effective. So we just need to work on ourselves. Plan your day. You know, in as much as you have Maybe you, 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 you have to go to fellowship. Yes, you have to, but not always. I'm not saying your relationship with God should be come back. But you need to inculcate this thing called discipline in your daily, daily life. And then the last person that asked a question about um, personality. When we talk about personality, it's a vast thing. I can't finish talking about it now. But when you talk about personalities, it's not just introvert and extrovert. This is just I, I, I quoted one one author. There are other people, there are other persons that, that have so many things to say about personality. That doesn't mean that um, extrovert don't read or that introvert read more. No. This thing we call personality. You might be an introvert and you have a little of the characteristics of an extrovert in you. I don't know if you understand. I am introverted, but I have some of the characteristics of an extrovert in me. You understand? What I'm saying is that maybe the friend you have is extroverted and and we know extrovert people that are social, they are outgoing, you understand? And when so on, most of these people, they because of their kind of person, they don't always read. Not that they don't maybe the time they read is during an odd hour and you may not know about it. But because this person is your friend, you're following 
the, 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 yeah, you're looking at him from the way you see him behave, and then you want to walk in line or walk in his, in his or her footsteps. No, you know yourself, you know your personality. Someone like me, if I don't read during the, 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 um, on hours of the night, I will not understand. And I have come to me that they don't like, they don't like me. If I chat, maybe once in emulate them, I will end up messing myself up. Why? Because my lifestyle and my personality, they are totally different from them. I'm just saying that you should watch yourself and then know how to plan yourself. It's all, it also includes discipline. All the things you're talking about, it's just discipline. Thank you. Hi, thank you. I believe it's uh, <laughs> very easy. We thank everyone for coming, for your participation on your side. Just like we said, we can't finish. We really want to thank Mr. Professor Gloria and Dr. for this initiative, this uh, venture. We are trying to develop in our own plan, uh, this idea of us. We thank you once again for participating in this session. Thank you.